In the last lecture, we converted our contact resource from an Angular JS service over to an Angular service. And in this lecture, we're going to do the same thing, but we're going to do it with our contact service. So not a contact resource, but our contact service. So we're going to migrate this over from Angular JS to Angular. Now, there's a couple of things we need to deal with here. And the first thing we need to deal with is injecting stuff into our contact service. Now, as before in the contact resource, I've said that I've had issues using the injectable decorator on the service class. So I've now started to use just an explicit inject decorator on its property. And uh, that's what I'm going to do here. Try it out with the injectable for you. It might be different. Maybe there's a bug and it will be fixed by the time you get to this point. Uh, right now, there's no knowledge of any bugs or anything like that. So that's what I recommend for this migration approach is just to be explicit with your injection and not rely on the injectable decorator. So I'm going to do the contact first. So the contact is our contact resource. I'm going to have it there. And I'm also going to refer to it as contact lowercase. Let me just make sure I import that. Oh, and let me import that here. It's always choosing the wrong path. So I'm going to fix that here. In fact, it's not even services. It's in the same folder. There we go. And the type is contact. And let me import that as well. So again, it's always finding from the wrong path. Let me keep that there. I like to have Angular at the top and my own personal stuff at the bottom. So there's one injection that we've got to deal with. Um, and in fact, we don't need this anymore. Toaster is another one. A toaster is a little bit more complicated to deal with. And we're going to deal with that in the next lecture. That's because toaster is a third party component. And uh, for this lecture, we're not going to deal with it, but we're going to deal with it in the very, very, very next lecture. So for now, let's just remove any references to the toaster. So let me get rid of these two here. We don't need those to be specified anymore. And as we go down, we need to do a couple of things. One of them is that I used to refer to it as the capital C contact, but now I've changed it to contact. I see those red lines there. I am going to come back and deal with that in a second. But let's just fix the rest of these. Let's comment out the toaster again. Change this to small case contact. I don't want to deal with toaster right now. And again here, and let's not deal with toaster. So if you look in the gutter, I've still got one error at the space here. And if you hover over it in VS Code, it gives you some nice little hints as to the problem. Now the problem here is, is me. I've made a mistake in the call signature, in the, in the parameter uh, type for this query parameters. I, I set it up wrong. This is the incorrect syntax for this kind of type. What I was trying to imply is that the params property is an object which has a string as the key and a string as a value. So an object of strings, string as a key and string as a value. But what this has actually done here is it's actually expecting a, an object with a key of string. It's literally expecting an object with a key of string. I've done that incorrectly. The actually correct syntax for that is let me make sure I'm going to get the right syntax so I don't mess up again. Yep, the correct syntax is key colon string. Okay, this in TypeScript, this is saying that whatever the, the key is, it needs to be a string type. So I'm using that in two places here and here. And if I go back into my contact service, hopefully. Oh, and there's another problem, which is the page property here. You can see it's a number and I need to convert that to a string. And yep, now that is giving me no more errors on this property. But interestingly, now it's giving me errors on some other properties underneath. And this is one of the really cool parts of working with TypeScript. Now we're still kind of working with an Angular JS application, but because we're using TypeScript, we're getting some really cool compile type checking. So we don't have to run the application to see these kinds of errors. We can now get these errors at compile time. And if you're using an editor like VS Code, it kind of shows up as you're typing. So it's really, really useful. Now the problem here is that the what's being returned by this query by default, the client, the HTTP client package that we're using when we call get on it will return a type of object. But query is actually going to return a type of an array. So to be specific about this, we need to add typing in various different places. So in the get, 
we need to specify that this get is going to return an array and the array is going to be type any. Now, I could actually be very explicit about this. I could create an interface or a model which defines a person, a person JSON object that's getting returned with all the properties in that JSON object. And I could define that here. And, and that's one of the really cool advantages of the HTTP client library is that it will, in fact, auto convert that JSON into instances of that object, of that type, that model, that class, I should say. But um, I'm not going to do that. For now, I'm just going to leave it as any. But if you wanted to do this properly um, with a bit more type checking, you could add that. But um, I'm not going to do that just for brevity. And I'm also going to be explicit about the return type. I'm going to say it's promise. And it's going to return an array of any because now it's returning a promise here. So hopefully that Yep, that's now gotten rid of this error. This it now knows that this is going to return an array and therefore it can loop over it uh, with the for of syntax. Now let's scroll down to the bottom and we now need to start dealing with this kind of downgrade upgrade process that I mentioned before. So if you remember from before the way what, what we have right now is we have the contact resource which I've migrated over to Angular from AngularJS, which is why it's blue. But in order to have that being used inside our contact service, I need to downgrade. I need to downgrade an Angular component so it could be uh, an Angular entity, sorry, so it can now be used inside an Angular JS entity. Okay. But now what we're doing is we're now rewriting our service, our contact service, uh, into Angular. So we'll need to do something similar. We'll need to rewrite it to Angular, but then downgrade it so it can be used in all the other components where we're going to be using this contact service. But interestingly, if you look at the resource, now resource is only ever going, that contact resource is only ever going to be used by our contact service. So because it's only ever going to be used now in an Angular context, it will never need to be used in an Angular JS context. We can actually remove the downgrading of that component. In fact, we can remove it from the Angular module system. And I'm going to show you what I mean in code now. So if you go into our contact resource, because this is only ever going to be used inside Angular now, not AngularJS, we can remove all of our old AngularJS code, including this import at the top. Now what we've got here is an absolutely 100% pure Angular service. No AngularJS is involved in this resource at all. We've completely migrated it. But we do need to deal with that in our contact service. So again, just like before, we need to turn from service into a factory and we need to call that downgrade injectable function and pass in the contact service and we need to import that. Let's hopefully, yep, it's actually got the right path there. So it's going to import that from the Angular static library and I'm going to stick at the top there because I like having Angular at the top and then my stuff underneath the Angular stuff. So now that we've created the co contact service, uh, another thing I need to do is basically provide it on our ng module. So if I go back onto main.ts, just the same as before, we, we now need to provide it as an Angular, uh, an Angular service. So do, all we need to do is really add it to our providers list there, and then obviously we need to import it. So let's now also make sure I import it from the right path. Excellent. Let's format this document. It's getting a little bit messy. There we go. And that should be it. So now if I compile, let's clear PM run build. Okay. Now let's take, let's go back to our application. Okay. So it looks like it's working. So excellent. Excellent, excellent, excellent. So you can see it's bootstrapping in hybrid mode. There's no errors in the console. We can delete and we can edit and save, but you might notice that the toaster isn't appearing anymore. And that's fine. I understood that. We understood that. I, I removed it from the previous, uh, in, in this step, I removed the toaster. But that's what we're going to deal with in the very next lecture is we're going to add that toaster functionality back in.